How bad is Britain when it comes to laundering dirty money? Well, very sadly, Alex, the truth is that we are one of the worst in the world. It's us and the United States. Now, this is not just down to our laws. Actually, our laws are pretty good, but it's down to the size of our markets. The reality is that if you have an exchange the size of the city or an exchange the size of New York, funnily enough, you're going to have a lot more dirty money than a smaller market. Now, this doesn't mean there's nothing we can do about it. There's plenty we can do about it. But we need to resource our law enforcement agencies properly. And how does this play into the situation we currently have in Ukraine? Is it just a case of some of Putin's cronies being able to hide their ill-gotten gains? Or is this actually actively funding the Russian war machine? Well, some of it is, as you say, hiding ill-gotten gains. There's this money stolen off the Russian people. Uh, let's not forget the first victims of the Putin regime are the Russian people themselves. And that money is stolen and then hidden in apartments and estate agents or through estate agents rather in the UK and around the world. That's part of it. But also some of it is then used. It's effectively cleaned, if you like, in the London laundromat. And it's then used to undermine British security around the world to, for example, uh, launch attacks on the uh, prime minister of Montenegro or to spread disinformation in Germany or even here in the UK uh, to fund operations like the attempted murder of the Skripals using chemical weapons in Salisbury or using nuclear chemicals here in London. And the government's have announced the Economic Crime Act in April this year, triggered, no doubt, by the invasion of Ukraine. But does that have enough teeth to bite where it matters? Yes, well, I'm very glad that they did. They were dropping it initially, and, uh, and I'm very glad that they decided to bring it back. And I'm sure Ukraine-focused minds on that. But this isn't just about Ukraine. You know, this isn't just about the Ukrainian people. And, you know, we're absolutely right to be standing with them. And I'm very glad that the government have done the sanctions that they've done. Those are really important. But this is actually about the British people. Alex, look, the reality is that corruption in the city, in uh, estate agencies, in, in, in the law in the UK, or rather the, 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 the handling of dirty money, spreads a corruption that is bad for all of us. Not only does it inflate house prices, it undermines trust and it erodes confidence in our democratic and legal systems. So it's really important for the British people, for us, for you, for me and for our friends and neighbours that we sort this out. This isn't about Ukraine. It's not about Eastern Europe. It's not even about Russia. It's about keeping ourselves safe. I mean, on that point, Russia obviously being the, uh, the, the highlight of um, people likely to be laundering money in our system. But what other countries should we be looking at closely? Well, very sadly, there are several Central Asian republics. There are also uh, Ukraine itself up until uh, Zelensky uh, and even, sadly, some of the oligarchs still active or at least were active uh, in Ukraine up until about a year or so ago, uh, were using uh, London. And we also know, of course, of China, where the red princes of the Communist Party, uh, all is not quite equal there, uh, were also stealing millions and millions of dollars off the Chinese people and hand hiding it in various jurisdictions. So this isn't just about Russia. It's also about corruption around the world. And that's why I say our security is based on the principle that you know, the UK economy is safe, you can rely on it, that the legal system is clean, that the estate agents uh, are doing their job and so on. And so closing down these illegal sources of funds, closing down this criminality is absolutely essential, not just for making sure that we dissuade bad actors abroad, but in order to protect ourselves here at home. Do we also perhaps need to be looking at the underbelly of lobbyists and law firms and spin doctors shilling for these kleptocrats? Yes, I'm afraid you're right there too, Alex. The, the, the tragedy is there are many people who, uh, forgive me, but yours and my profession have formerly employed people that you and I probably know who have made decisions that, frankly, are extremely unsavory. And the United States deals with this in various different ways, including uh, a Foreign Agents Registration Act, which, as you know, I support very strongly. The idea that you should be allowed to silently lobby for a dictatorship like China, for example, I think is grossly wrong. Uh, and when you see that in the United States, General John Allen has just been forced to resign from his position leading a think tank because he seems to have been uh, lobbying for a foreign government. This has to be an act that takes in everybody from the very top to the very bottom. This has to be something that treats everybody equally. Look, the principle of the rule of law for us has always been equality before the law. But in order to be equal before the law, the law needs to know who you're representing. And that means foreign states as well. And when it comes to vulnerability of politics, is there a risk that some of these ne'er-do-wells are actually getting undue influence over political parties through donations? 
Well, there is always that danger, isn't there? And, and recently, you'll remember, Alex, there was that story of uh, the Chinese agent who MI5 was so worried about that uh, they made her name public. And she was uh, also qualified as a solicitor in the United Kingdom and was using her money to influence various different politicians. Very sadly, some politicians uh, on the Labour benches, on the Liberal benches, uh, took money off them. And uh, I have to say, uh, it's the sort of thing that we need to have public. If you are a foreign agent, if you are lobbying on behalf of a foreign government, we, the British people, should know who you're lobbying for.